On the 6th of February, 2014, in the snowy hills of central Norway, atop a small mountain pond known as Plura, a pair of divers cut a hole in the ice and began to don their dry suits and prepare their gear for their long and frigid upcoming dive. As they breached the ice with a chainsaw, one of the men, Patrick Gronquist, excitedly remarked that the water was looking very clear today. He was no stranger to the depths of the cave passage that the men would be descending into soon, as he had been one of the original explorers of the passage and found its connection to a small cave in the hills about a mile away, known as Steinugelflaget. Patrick had come prepared that day to film the whole connecting passage for the first time. For the other man, Yari Huitaranen, this would be his first time diving in the passage, but he was a very skilled cave diver nonetheless. The men readied their gear and were eager to begin their dive, and radioed their three friends that they were about to begin their dive. The trio was set to follow them two hours later in order to allow any sediment that may have been kicked up by the pair time to settle. And so, Patrick Gronquist and Yari Huitaranen set off onto what was supposed to be a long, deep, and challenging five-hour dive assisted by underwater scooters. And so, the men descended into the pond and into the depths of the cave. The first leg of the journey saw them descend about 65 feet into a dark cave system lined by jagged rocks, and then along through a long passage lined with an air pocket. At the end of this airline stretch was a sharp descent into a deep, narrow sump, more than 442 feet at its deepest point. About an hour in, and the dive was seemingly going to plan, and the pair were beginning their ascent up the other side of the U-shaped passage into Steinugelflaget Cave. At a depth of about 360 feet below where they had started at Plura, Patrick noticed Yari flashing his light, indicating that he needed some help. Yari's equipment had become tangled with the line that they were following, and he was stuck. Patrick quickly came to Yari's aid, but Yari had begun to panic. Panicking after becoming stuck or lost while cave diving is quite common, and is known by divers to be a common killer in the sport, as panicking increases your rate of breathing and consumes your breathing gas supplies much more quickly than normal. However, due to the length of the dive, the men were not wearing a typical open breathing system where after the breathing gas is breathed in by the diver, all of the gas is expelled, but rather a closed system known as a rebreather, where the spent gas has the carbon dioxide filtered out and expelled, and the remaining gas is mixed with more oxygen-rich gas. However, when breathing at too high of a rate, the carbon dioxide will not be able to be filtered out quickly enough, and the diver quickly experiences a feeling of suffocation, as their body naturally reacts to the higher concentration of carbon dioxide in their blood. Patrick of course knew this, and ready to spare gas cylinder and regulator, and passed it to Yari. As Yari was switching regulators, he began swallowing water, and quickly drowned as Patrick watched helplessly in horror as his friend perished right in front of him. Patrick stayed there trying to free Yari's body for another 20 minutes to no avail, before conceding that he could not free Yari's body and that he would have to continue the dive alone. Patrick knew that by staying there at such a depth for even a short time would prolong his ascent, as those extra 20 minutes had increased his needed decompression time by hours in order for him to avoid potentially fatal decompression sickness from resurfacing too quickly. He also knew that the second group of divers would come across Yari's body blocking the narrow passage, and he had no way to contact them about the whole ordeal. As planned, the second group of three men set off from their dive from Plura a few hours later and made their way through the tunnels and through the long air chamber and descended into the sump. Leading the way was a man by the name of Vesa Rantanen. When he began his ascent up the sump, he came across the body of Yari Huitaranen. He later recounted that the extreme silence of the cave was pierced by an eerie beeping sound. As he approached Yari's body, his worst fears were realized as the beeping had been coming from Yari's safety equipment and his body was blocking the tight passageway. Vesa decided to try to squeeze past Yari's body as turning around would be a much longer journey than simply pressing forward. And so, he slowly squeezed past the body, knowing that a tear in his dry suit from the sharp cavern's rocks would surely kill him in those frigid depths. Following behind Vesa was a man named Yari Usumaki, and when coming across the body of the other Yari, he began to panic and turn back. Near the very bottom of the sump, 
At a depth of about 442 feet, Usumaki also became stuck. The final diver, Kai Konkanen, who like Patrick Cronquist, was one of the original explorers of the cave system and its connection to Steinugelflaget, attempted to aid Usumaki, but was ultimately unsuccessful, and like the other Yari, Yari Usumaki eventually drowned, stuck near the bottom of the narrow sump. Kai decided to head back the way that they had come, and after an 11 hour dive, eventually he resurfaced back at Plura, although it had been so long since he had set out on the dive that he had to break through the refrozen ice from below. Patrick Gronquist and Vesa Rantanen eventually surfaced in the pool in Steinugelflaget Dry Cave, and all three surviving men suffered from decompression sickness, known as the bends, from surfacing too quickly after spending time at such depths. The police were notified and quickly realized that they would need to call in expert divers if they wanted any chance at recovering the bodies. The cave was declared closed to the public, and the police assembled an international team of acclaimed divers to help with the recovery of the bodies. The international divers descended from Steinugelflag at Dry Cave and came across the body of Yari Huitaranen and attempted to free it, but determined that there was no possible way to free it from that side. The divers noted the cramped, dangerous conditions of the caves and after deliberation, decided that the recovery of both of the bodies would be too dangerous, even for expert divers such as themselves. The surviving divers and their friends within the diving community were distraught upon learning this and decided that if the police and international divers would not recover the bodies of their friends from the cave, that they owed it to their friends to go back and recover the bodies themselves, illegally if need be. After all, they did know the cave better than anyone else on the planet. And so, they began to plan an expedition back into the sump. And a month or so later, they hauled equipment to both Plura and Steinugelflug at Dry Cave, which was no easy feat by itself. The two-day expedition to recover the bodies was covered in the documentary, Diving into the Unknown, chronicling the emotional expedition. All the surviving divers were present, although Kai turned back shortly into the operation, being uneasy with the whole thing after Patrick had taken a wrong turn towards a dead end while descending. He, however, helped the team by hauling necessary gear between Plura and Steinugelflug at Dry Cave instead. Vesa served as the surface manager of the operation due to a spinal injury caused by his decompression sickness. If you're interested in knowing more about this operation, I'll link the documentary in the description. It's very good and offers first-hand accounts of the incident, as well as extensive footage of the caves and the recovery of the bodies. The operation was ultimately successful, although one of the recovery divers, Sami Pakarinen, the third of the trio that had originally discovered the connecting cavern with Patrick and Kai, almost died as the cave collapsed during the operation and he was nearly crushed by a large falling boulder, which he captured on film. They alerted the authorities that they had recovered the bodies, and despite the operation being illegal, none of those involved were charged with any crime. Patrick Gronquist was later nominated by his co-workers at the fire station at which he worked to receive a first-class medal of the White Rose of Finland for his heroism. The cave system was reopened to the public, and on August 10, 2019, a couple was married with 66 guests in the large air-filled chamber, setting the Guinness World Record for the largest wedding in a flooded cave. And while the bodies of both Yaris were ultimately recovered, some of their gear remains in the sump serving as a grim reminder to anyone who would dare descend into its frigid depths. Thank you all for watching.